Praise him, praise him till I'm gone. I'm gone. Praise him, praise him till I'm gone. When the blazes go up, the blessings come down. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. When the praises go up. And now joining us live via Skype is Joey Valdivia. Joey, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. So, uh, senior day last last Saturday. I mean, you smashed records. That coach Coach said in his uh, after the game in his address, he said, you know, that your your rushing touchdowns, six touchdowns in that game, looks like it'll never be broken. Uh, what was it like breaking that record, and how was that senior day experience for you? I a, it was great. You know. Uh... I gotta give a shout out to the old line because they they put a, they put a hell of a game that game and without those guys and the receivers around without without any of those guys around me I wouldn't have been able to break that record so I got I gotta give a big thanks to those guys but I just I thought I thought it was a great day for for the entire offense. Uh, you you definitely must have fed off the uh, the crowd sellout crowd really. Um, over the past few years, how have you gotten to know the fans and? Uh, your your family how many how many you know the games uh you're from Gray's Lake so how many games do they come out uh this is family day so they were able to walk you down as a senior I didn't I didn't walk on Saturday but uh oh, right, right. it's great having my family being able to come to all my games you know they go to the away games too it's, it's something special because not all not all the players get to have their families there and for me it's uh I just I just enjoy that my mom gets to watch the games that's like the biggest my biggest supporter, so I'm happy about that. And you mentioned uh, you didn't walk. Mo all the uh, the seniors walked with their parents uh, coming down before the game. You mentioned you didn't walk, uh, and the reason is because uh, you're <laughs> as a you're going to be a fifth year senior next year. You're coming back next year. That's it. Mu must have been great. Can you make an official uh, comment on that? I guess for your for your decision. <laughs> I just I still have a lot left in me to just you know that I, I want to leave out, out in the field before I like I decided like I want to be done you know I just I, inside of me I know that I still can get better as a player so I think that's and I still have that drive in me so as long as I have the drive mentally and physically is that's why I decided to come back I was just because I still have that drive uh have you have you discussed uh with some of your fellow running backs Frankie Charlie uh, and Nico about your experiences at Lake Forest and uh, have you talked to Charlie who's going to be uh, leaving after this year about you know what 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 it's life's been like really at Lake Forest or and have you been you know mentoring guys like Frankie who's just a freshman this year yeah I mean I'm uh when I'm at practice or during a game I just kind of like being by myself I don't say too much but yeah, I, I mean, I tell them, like, you know, good job whenever they're in or a good, good run or, you know, keep your head up, keep on going. If they make a mistake, you know, I just try to be a role model. Uh, coach Dow, the running backs coach, uh, it seems like every group has uh, a coach they looked up, look up to, but he's really um, been a model for, for the program, especially for the running backs. What he what has he uh, specifically taught to you uh, over your four years so far here at Lake Forest? Ball management, that, that's pretty big. Ball management, I mean, every drill we do in practice, he's always like, keep that ball high and tight. So in my head, I've always, now that he's like ingrained it into me, like keep that ball high and tight. So 
that's like my main focus. That's like the number one thing I've learned from him is keep that ball high and tight and make sure no one takes it away. Uh, before the first game, I was talking to Coach Dow, and he mentioned the running backs group, and he mentioned you. Um, one of the big things he mentioned was your toughness, and that's one thing I've noticed. You know, you absorb these bruising hits, and after every game, um, you know, or at least around the third quarter, your jersey, your number on the back is always ripped, and that's because, you know, you're taking these brutal hits, but it seems like you keep going on. How are you – how do you feel you're able to do that, you know, keep breaking through defenses? What, well, you know, what, you know – what drives you to keep going? I just, ever since I was uh, younger, like in high school, like I was a wrestler in high school, so it really taught me mental toughness. And really just, I never, I don't want, I don't like hitting the ground, so like that's what keeps me going. Like I don't want to like hit the ground, so I'm like, this guy's not going to stop me because I don't want to hit the ground. So, but really, I think, uh, it all goes, it all like happens off the field, you know, making sure that my body is ready to go for every, every Saturday, making sure I'm ice bathing, stretching and doing all the little things right. So I can go out there and keep on getting up and keep on going for every, every game. Getting your body right was certainly something you did after the 2013-2014 uh, season. You mentioned to me before, uh, it was when you had a hamstring injury and you're at both of those, uh, those seasons. How did you get back into the, you know, the, the football mindset really after a whole season gone? Uh, that's a hard transition to make going from, you know, resting to back, going back out on the field. Uh, can you just explain really how do you make that transition? Because it's a hard one for athletes, especially with a hamstring as you're running back. I mean, it took me a while to get back into the, the groove of things, you know. I, you know, this season's been great, but I still think that I, there's still a lot in me. Like I haven't, I've performed well, but I think there's still more in me because it's my first real season being back since high school that I've been healthy for a whole season since the last season I was healthy for the whole season was 2011. So it's been a while, but I think uh, really just for me, it's like uh, just being able to go out there every day and continue to do my job, you know. This season so far, especially, it seems like you've been torching defenses in every game so far. Uh, minus one, you've had over 100 yards and uh, yep. Most of the games, 200 yards, multiple touchdowns game. The one game, uh, the exception was at Monmouth, uh, a tough game in, in overall for Lake Forest. But you still scored a touchdown at that game. What was different for you? You know, those guys are – That was, it was a great team. You know, they had, a, they, had, they, had a good, they had big guys. They were fast. And we just didn't come out ready to play that game. So, you know, it wasn't just me. It was an overall team loss. And – you know, we, we learned from that game and make sure we got better after that week. Uh, you mentioned you're uh, not a huge, not, not a very talkative guy in the field, but uh, you, you must spend a lot of time, uh, especially, you know, during practices and games uh, with the offensive line and quarterback Jake and Cleary. Uh, how have you gotten to know those guys over the years? When I first got back to Lake Forest from, uh, from my injuries and it took me a while to, you know, get to know the guys again. Now I feel like our relationships got growing a lot and, now we definitely have a – I think we, as an overall team, we have a, a bigger bond than we had at the beginning of the year. And this is first and ten, so we like to talk about uh, how you got – how players get their start here at Lake Forest. So coming from Glaze, Gray's Lake, obviously, around the area, uh, how did you get involved with the Lake Forest program? Did, you know, Coach Cat or some of the other coaches reach out to you or, you know, were you taking a visit? Coach Sankson and uh, my head wrestling coach were roommates in high school. They went to high school together. So that's really how I, I got connected with Lake Forest. That's interesting. RJ I've had uh, Coach Cat's uh, wife as a gym teacher, and you had a Coach Sankson's roommate. It's always interesting to see how players come to get to go to Lake Forest. Last question for you, Joey, here. Uh, you're going to play your final game of the season here in Iowa. Uh, what are you looking forward to accomplish here? Uh, I, I think just leaving here with the W will be very important for me, and just making sure we go out there and do our job is – the, my number one goal and making sure that I do my job so we can, so I can help the team win. Joy Valdivia, I saved really, I think the best for last year, tried to get you near the end. Uh, and for what really was a fantastic season, a record breaking season. Thank you so much, Joy, for joining us this week. All right. Thanks, man. Have a good night. You too. Coach, it pains me to f say this, but you know, for the last time this season, <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us live via Skype. Great to be on, man. Happy to do it.
Uh, Coach last week was uh, certainly an emotional week for players, coaches, and families alike as Senior Day and Family Day. Um, knowing that most a lot of those seniors uh, won't be coming back and that was their final football football game, what's it like for you as a coach knowing that? You know, it's tough because you, you think about when you recruited them as 18-year-olds or 17-year-olds in high school and how far some of them have come in their, their personal growth while they've been in the program. And, and sometimes it's stuff that actually happened on the field or around the program, but sometimes it's just because they've gotten older and a little bit wiser, a little bit more mature and you know, you think by that time where he had to yell at a kid as a freshman because he couldn't show up to things on time, and now he's 10 minutes early for everything. Or, you know, you see the, the smile on their face when they're walking down there with their mom and dad, and they get to be a son for a little bit instead of being their their independent self that they usually try to be around the coaches and the players. And so it, it, it is great. It's a great experience. I think we do it pretty well at our place. Um, you know, we keep some of the old traditions, but we add some new traditions every year. I think that our players, you know, they enjoy it and they, they go out and they play really hard for each other. And it's, it's fun to watch the younger guys want to send the upper class guys out of Farwell field with a victory. You know, we want to always want to protect the forest, but they, they really try hard on that senior day for those guys. Due to their great performances last week, both Joey Valdivia and Alex Pajewitz were named co Midwest conference uh, players of the week for the second week in a row. And both of them have had individual nominations as well. Uh, is, is, do you think there's a more deadly combo, uh, at least on your team, or maybe even in the Midwest Conference? Well, I, you know what's funny about that is they, they really are because they're number one and two in the conference in all-purpose yards. I mean, they're only point two away from each other, so they're both in a little competition this week. Um, but I, I laugh because I think about what would happen if Willie McIntyre had stayed healthy and you had another guy who was you know, a returning first-team all-conference player. Or you look at Charlie Quinn, who's another returning all-conference player from last year, and you've got four guys that are just super talented. And um, unfortunately, due to you know Willie's injury, that put a little bit more of the passing game on Charlie and uh, Alex this year. And they re- they both responded. And uh, but Alex in the in the kick return, there's nobody in the entire country who's doing what he's doing right now. I mean, five returns for touchdowns. I mean, and he's leading and he's in the top ten for both. It's just. He's having a special year. And then you got Joey, who's, I think, number one in the nation in rushing touchdowns by like 10. Is he really? Like, yeah, it's not even close. And so, uh, you know, it's kind of a neat deal to to see it and, and to have those two guys who can do a lot of different things because they can both, you know, find ways to get involved. I mean, Alex has a game this year where he's got one catch for nine yards, but he ends up with over 190 all-purpose yards because he runs a couple of fake punts and he catches a, a kickoff for a touchdown. So, I think what's great about them is neither one of them really forced the issue to themselves. They find a way to, to be patient, and then when it's their time, they make big plays. And speaking of Alex Fajewitz, uh what, what was cooler? He had two fantastic plays um, in addition to some others. What was cooler to watch his punt return for a touchdown where there were some fantastic blocks by the uh, return team there or his uh, crazy bobbled catch throw deep to Jagan <laughs> Clear, and he, he was bobbling it. you think he wouldn't catch it, and he came down – uh, with the catch, and there's a great view from the uh, sky cam that I watched right before this interview. What was cooler uh, for you as a coach? And For me, it was the punt return because the punt return takes so many other guys to, to happen. You can't return a punt for a touchdown just as one person. you got to have a whole team do that, whereas kind of the bobble catch was a more individual focus thing. Um, but truth be told, I think the most impressive thing he did on the day was his uh, first catch of the game. He hit two spin moves on guys and made them whiff, and I didn't see it in person. I had to see because I was talking to the defense, but I saw it on film and I was like, "Oh my goodness! I didn't know he had that one in him." So that was he had three really special plays on Saturday, and you know it was a really special senior day for Alex because his brother, who is in the military, um, it was the first time he'd been able to see Alex play since his freshman year. So he flew in from Japan and had a chance to watch Alex play on on Saturday, and it was a really, really cool because you could see the emotional side of Alex come out. That is. You know, he, he's, again, really reserved on those types of things. But when, when he found out that his brother was there because um, he had surprised him on Friday night by showing up, it was, uh, it was a great thing for Alex. I think having that, that extra boost really put a, put a little bonus into his step on Saturday. And do you feel overall as a team, you know, knowing that your parents were there and knowing that there, that there was their final game there at Farwell Field, that that put, like you said, an extra boost uh, in, in their overall morale in their, in their game? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a twofold thing that, you know, they had each of our senior classes for the last four years have won their final game on Farwell. 
And so I know that our guys talk about that. I'd heard them talking about it in the pregame. And, and for me, when they do that, it, it just means the most. They want to have that game where they can take the pictures after the game of their, their last game on their home field. And you want a scoreboard behind you that's got the, the, the score to your favor. And uh, so I think that the guys definitely were, were excited about that. Um, and, and they always get up for the Knox game. I mean, Knox, is, it's a big game for us. We're not going to call it the rivalry game, but it's a big game for us where our guys really want to play well. Um, Knox and us recruit a lot of the same people. There's a lot of crossover. You know, Coach Myers, our D-line coach, his son coaches for Knox as a DB coach. And then, uh, I'm sorry, as a, as a defensive coach. And then their DB coach, uh, Coach Gibbons, his daughter, Anna Beth, works for us in the football office at Lake Forest. So there's you got some family ties there, too, that are, are really tight. We want to we want to have the bragging rights at Thanksgiving dinner. There's no doubt about it. This might not be familiar to some uh, Forrester fans, but you after uh, after a game against Knox, you give uh, the player who brought you know the most uh, heart really to the game. Uh, you give them a tire hose after the game. And they get to put up uh, it with the score. What was that like giving it to Marty Shine? A Really great member of the offensive line this this year. It was awesome. He totally earned it. And he's been the, you know, it's kind of weird. He's been the spiritual leader, if you will, of the offensive line all season. And, and he's been consistently grading out at 85 to 90 percent. And uh, he tries super hard. And, and the thing about Marty is this is his first year being a full-time starter. You know, as a senior, and he's got all these young guys around him. Um, he's the only senior on the offensive line that starts. And he's, you know, really put a lot of effort into making sure that he could be that guy this year. And uh, watching him out there and, and seeing the energy and intensity that he brought has just been a, a really special thing. So it was, it was great to see him have that and get a chance to, to be the guy to receive that on the old line. And, you know, it was, uh, it, was, it was just really special. Since returning last week, uh, Riley Bunsick, in only two games, he's already racked up 16 tackles since returning from a pretty bad injury. Uh, what, what's he been, what's he meant to your defense? And, you know, he, well, he's, uh, uh, in the beginning weeks, he was holding the camcorder during practices, but now he's really making an impact on, and you can see him on film now. He's making really an impact on the team. What's he meant to you? Yeah, you know, Riley's a, a very talented player, and, and he was a guy we got really, um, in our opinion, fortunate that he found Lake Forest late in the recruiting process. He had actually uh, enrolled in the summer down at the University of Kansas. Right, yeah, yeah. He was going to go there as a, uh, as a preferred walk-on, but – um, hurt his knee, got mono, had like a kind of the, the snowball effect of just a bunch of different things happened and decided he wanted to come back closer to home. And uh, knew Tommy Kelly on our team and Jordan McInerney. And so when, when he came back and found us, it was, it was kind of a neat thing because he didn't find us until August. Uh, literally, as we were getting ready to move into camp, we, we get a call from him about three days earlier about wanting to be there. And, and we, so we start scrambling to make everything happen. Um, yeah, but we knew he wasn't gonna be able to play for a while. He had, you know, he'd had the knee injury and it was just a matter of, um, being patient with the physical therapy and letting him get healthy. And, uh, he, he's definitely gotten healthy uh, where he's probably behind right now is schematic understanding. He just doesn't know our whole defense. And so, uh, you, you got to kind of have him out there with Joe Nitty. So Joe can tell him where he needs to go and what his role is on the play and, um, kind of coach him up on the field. And we're, we're really working on trying to keep that part growing, but man, his future's bright. It, it really is a, a bright future, but he had, it was funny, his best plays this past week were on special teams. On the opening kickoff, he flies down and hits the guy and forces a fumble that goes out of bounds. A fantastic um, he, hit on uh, on Alex Bajewicz's punt return touchdown. Yeah, he had the huge block on that one. I mean, yeah. so he had – he's found a way to make plays um, where maybe understanding isn't important. He could just fly down and, and make a tackle. And then on the defensive side, you know, as he continues to learn more and, you know, get himself back into shape, I think that he's got a chance to be a, a really good football player for us. Uh, th in the last Skype interview we did, uh, which is all the way back in week three, can you believe it? Uh, I asked you about the penalties. Uh, at that time, you had actually amassed quite a bit of penalties, uh, over hundreds of yards, really. Uh, and last week, uh, you, you only gave up five penalties for 45 yards. That's a really fantastic improvement, and that's that's a great number, uh, you know, a, a mark that a lot of NFL teams and, you know, college teams, they all want to be at. Uh, what's changed over those weeks? Maturity. We've, uh, we were a really young team the whole year. I mean, we've talked about the, you know, only having six starters that are seniors on our team. And I think that young guys being pressed into service, they try to do too much. And a lot of times when you do too much, it ends up getting you – you know, some of those cheap penalties or maybe you get viewed as a, you know, a late hit when you're trying to fly around to the whistle and you're like, oh, I got a chance at this hit. And then the whistle blows and you still go for the hit. Um, I think that the the maturity and seeing how it can hurt us in the game 
um, started to help our guys. And that really happened at the, uh, gosh, that was Carlton was the week we were, it was really, really bad on our part, just the way we were kind of self imploding with a big lead. Um, and some of the penalties we started to give up, we're getting them back into the game. And I think that the guys were able to learn from that and, you know, take the, take what they had seen there and start to try to get it out of our system, so to speak, and, and not have that be a big part of who we are. I mean, there's always going to be some penalties, but you want to try and keep it as minimal as possible. Uh, what are your goals uh, for this Saturday's game? Win. Go 1-0. and It's what we do every week. You know, I'd love to give you something bigger and more uh, profound, but that's really what it is for our guys. If, if we're going to stay consistent and, and do what we want to do, it's really go out from the, the opening kick and play a full 60 minutes of football and – and get that win. That's that's really what matters. If we can send our guys out with a eight and two season, you know that's going to be uh, something we can really build upon, both in recruiting and into the off season. But it's also something that's only been done six times in school history. And so they, if they can do that this year and make this year number six um, of eight wins, that's that's something they got to take great pride in. And is it's exactly the mark that the 2012 team, a fantastic team, reached. Unfortunately, had great uh, competition in the conference in Monmouth, McAllister, and Saint Norbert. Really. Um, this year coach well what about something extra uh, something extra that you mentioned that you could have given me what about playing time uh, this is the final game and I don't usually like to uh, I know you uh, obviously like I mentioned last week you don't like looking at the records of teams but um, you look at it might be you could say a, a, a weaker opponent you're facing this week um, do you think maybe in the later stages of the game you could give uh, you know, certain certain players, freshmen, or I mean, uh, uh, seniors especially, uh, some more playing time. You know, we're gonna we're gonna play that kind of by ear. We don't want to plan too ahead, but we, you know, there are some guys that, you know, if we can get them a little bit extra playing time, we want to do that. You know, last week we started to do that actually, as we, you know, as we kind of got amassed the big lead last week. Um, you got to see guys in the first half like Keegan McKenna and Wesker Guidis on the D line, and then. You know, at the we played all four quarterbacks last year or last week in the game at different points, and um, I think we got, I think we got every position player in but two, and mainly the only reason we didn't get those two guys in, unfortunately, um, was that our defense couldn't get off the field in the fourth quarter. We gave a pretty lengthy drive that they scored at the end of the game, and we couldn't really get enough plays to on offense to rotate some of our offensive linemen in, but we were able to get, I think it was all but three guys. Um, that were position players got a chance to play on Saturday. Um, the one guy that we did sub out this week that will give a, a, a sophomore a chance to play a little bit more um, is, uh, or I'm sorry, junior Sam Pluchek. He's going to be starting a punter this week um, instead of Charlie Courtney. And, uh, you know, that was kind of the one guy we really wanted to get some live reps for. And so, uh, you know, if we have to punt on Saturday, he's going to be the guy to, to line up back there and, and kick the ball. Well, that's good to know. Thanks, Coach. Um, and you're in Iowa, obviously. You had a walkthrough. You've done walkthroughs at you know UW River Falls and some high schools. But this is this. I think this week was special for you. You played at Kinnick Stadium, where Iowa, the Iowa Hawkeyes play. That that must have been cool for you and your your players to play in front of. Obviously, it was empty, but a stadium that can hold seventy thousand. And you know, you know how lively it is on game days. Must have been cool practicing there. You know, it was, and it's funny when we talked to the guys, hey, it's still just 120 yards by 53 and a third, but you can't ignore the empty seats that are that are surrounding you. And I think where they really got a kick is that there's, a, I think it's a hospital building that's kind of overlooks the field to the one end. And they have, a, it must be like a conference room or something up on the top. And all of a sudden you look up and there was like 40 or 50 people standing there, you know, peering down at us from way up there. And it was like, they probably have no idea who they are, who we are but they think we're <laughs> Iowa. So that's okay. Uh, but no, it was great. You know, there's so much history and tradition in that stadium. And, uh, you know, Coach Rowan, our offensive line or our strength and conditioning coach was here. And that's, you know, he went to Iowa for his last two years. And so it was, it was a lot of fun for us to be there. And, uh, you know, for us, we just want a place to get out of the bus and run around a little bit. And, you know, I think the guys were kind of uh, shocked at how well my voice carried in such a big stadium bouncing off the, the bleachers. But I think that they uh, they enjoyed that. But no, it's a it's a place that we respect the way their football program is, and when you we got a place to go and be a part of that history, and something a lot of our guys will talk about. You know, they'll go back for a game and watch Iowa play Illinois or something someday, and tell their son that you know what I got to do a walkthrough on that field. I've been on that field as a as a player, and you know because we do seven on seven and stuff like that, they actually get to run some plays, and you know that's a that's kind of a cool deal for them. 
moving on, uh, re- reflecting on the season is probably pretty hard at this point, as you still haven't played the last game. Uh, but because this is the final Forrester focus, uh, could you tell us what are you know some moments uh, that have stood out to you so far this year? Yeah, you know when you when you think about the year as a whole, there's a lot of a lot of things that come to memory. But the first game of the year, um, having a chance to honor DJ at that game. Um, and, and I even think about that with the McAllister game because they did a moment of science before the game with his big face up on the jumbotron there, and you know those those things really really come to my mind because of the way our guys have um, honored him throughout the year, and we've talked about him a lot and continued to to think about him and his family, and uh, so I think that that is, is one thing that is truly resonates. Um, you know, as far as individual plays and things like that, I think Alex Pazowitz's um, kick return versus St. Norbert. Uh, at, at the second quarter to get us back into that game and get momentum moving in the right direction um, is definitely one of them. Um, you know, homecoming beating Ripon in front of a really big crowd and, and doing it convincingly. You know, the last couple of times we've been, we've been about one of those one-score games where you're kind of nail-biting all the way to the end, and this year we had a little bit more of a cushion. And uh, so that was nice. Hopefully we can do that the next time we play them. Uh, but, you know, it, there's it's just a great season. You know, we'll have our banquet in January and take a chance to – to look back, you know, if you ask our players, they're going to tell you finding pizza ranches in two different countries to go eat at is, or two different states to go eat at is going to be one of their highlights. <laughs> you know, for, for me, it's just been a really cool, cool season with a great group of guys. And I, I think when you look at the camaraderie that they display and the brotherhood that's so important to them, um, you know, that to me is a, is a really big, really big thing that I'll, that's the part you remember later on. The scores of the games will fade and, you know, you might remember one or two plays, but it'll be the the relationships you got to see grow and, um, you'll get to continue to see those when those guys come back for homecomings down the road and things like that. Well, Coach, uh, well, it's the final game of the year for uh, the Foresters. It's also the final episode of Forester Focus. There might be a, an extra special, uh, t- some extra special tidbits coming, but this is my final interview, official interview with you. And I just want to say um, it's just been a, such a pleasure interviewing you. So we've done it seven times, one with Coach Butts and two I was out with pneumonia for, but you know, seven times doing them with you, you always gave such tremendous answers. And I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm still growing as an interview, but I, as an interviewer, but I feel you've helped me grow so much. Um, and it's just been so fantastic having someone to give me, you know, feedback and you're so knowledgeable about the game. So it's been fantastic talking to you throughout the year. And I'll never forget when I was uh, in a whole different country and I got an email from you asking me to do this. And it's been such a fantastic ride so far. And I just want to thank you for that. Well, I appreciate all the work you've done, man. You've set a standard for anybody that ever tries to replace you that uh, they're going to have a real hard time living up to. But, <laughs> you know, you've been you've been a part of our family down here now. And, you know, one thing we've got a motto on this campus is uh, when you're a forester, you're a forester forever. And so whether you decide to go to Lake Forest in about six years or not, or you go somewhere else, you're still going to be a part of our football family no matter what. Well, that's great to know. Thank you so much once again for joining me this week, Coach Cat and Zero. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. When the places go up, good God! The places go down, the places go down. When the places go up, the places go down.